you know he'll never say to you, Lord, Lord, and he says, depart from me, I never knew you. Because that quote, spoken to those who had prophesied in his name, spoken to those who had done all manner of spiritual things in his name, and they weren't counterfeit, was spoken on the Sermon on the Mount. Start in the back and read the last part before you read the first. And you may be surprised at what Jesus said. Because in the Sermon on the Mount, when we go through the devotion, we will look at step-by-step -step portions of it in small pieces so we can understand and grab a hold of what Jesus was saying and make it real in our lives. Because he's saying it today to us. He wants it to be real in us now because he is coming again. But the warning is also there at the end of the book or at the end of what he had to say. And the Sermon on the Mount, though we record it in Matthew and say it's in chapter 5 and goes all the way on with the Beatitudes to the prayers, to the statements, to the quote-unquote similes or metaphors that we say they are, and ends in chapter 8 at the end of chapter 7. But listen to what he said in the end of chapter 7, even as you've heard it in the beginning on all three of these introductions. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone, everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon sand, and the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. The rains will come, the flood will come, the wind will come. Will your house stand? If you do these sayings of mine, as Jesus said, then you will survive. Because there is a time of trial and testing that comes upon every man to determine which way he will stand, whether he will turn to the right, to the left, whether he will panic or protect, or, as they don't know in humanistic endeavors, whether they will stand on the promises of the Word of God or whether they will stand on what Jesus said to do. We are told in Scripture often, having done all, stand. Sometimes we're told to stop what you're doing, stand and wait and see the salvation I bring. The point of what Jesus said is a reality of Jesus is alive and living today or he's not and you should give up what you call Christianity and deny the fact that there is a living and personal God and go after some other theology or some other way of life. Because in some other way, you may be happier than what you're doing today. Because if you're not living as though God is alive and alive, as God is alive and working in you, both to do and to will of his good pleasure, then you're failing the things that the Bible says you should be, which is, one, you must be born again. No ifs, ands, or buts. I don't care how you define it. I don't care what you play with it. I don't care how you try to interpret it. Jesus said, you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You must be born again. No one who is not born again can enter into the kingdom of God. You cannot come into the Father but by Jesus Christ and what he said to do. And Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life, which is why we keep emphasizing in this introduction to the Sermon on the Mount, these sayings of mine, these sayings of Jesus, this is Jesus, this is your Lord, this is your Master, this is your Savior, this is your God speaking. These sayings are His. This is the Word of God alive. It's powerful. In the Beatitudes, it's wonderful. In the rest, it's challenging. And in the total volume of it, it is what you must do and become.
Because you see right now, in Christianity, I have seen this. The violent declaring that they can kill in the name of the Lord. The violent declaring that they can do all manner of lawful things because God is on our side. So we can go out and take another life. We can do it because it's just and it's right. And we have the scepter. We have the power of life and death. We can choose to remove a life and declare it eternally damned before God. Because it's been given to us as authority for us to make the decision. For judgment is ours to render unto every soul, whether or not they live or whether they die. That is not my Jesus. That is not the Sermon on the Mount. And I'll say it at the beginning here. That is not Christianity. The difference of these sayings of Jesus is what makes Christianity real or just another religion. If you're choosing a religion, don't watch these. If you're trying to make something work for you, don't watch these. Don't participate in the devotional throughout this year. But if God is real, and if God is alive and you can hear his voice, and you know that the word is literal, that it is speaking to you, and it is fitting into your life, and it is becoming a part of you, and it is living and alive and accomplishing in you the purposes that God designed it for, and that it doesn't come back to God void except that it changes you and makes you into his image, then you may find something here for you. Because these sayings of mine that Jesus said were his have not been distorted in thousands of years because people know no one would say these things no one except a son of God no one except the son of man and there is no other teacher and there is no other preacher and no other philosopher who has ever said these sayings of mine that Jesus said and made them so adamantly real and literal that no one would dare to utter something like that and declare it to be his criteria for being in the kingdom of God. These sayings of mine are what Jesus said. You will apply it according to how God fits into your life. You might interpret it. Then you haven't interpreted Jesus. You might spiritualize it. Then you can spiritualize Jesus. You might make it a simile or a metaphor. Then you might say, oh, well, it's just a simile or metaphor. You might do all manner of things to these sayings of mine that Jesus said, except for one thing. When you read it, let me ask you this. When you get to the end of it, what will you do when you read Matthew 7, 24 through 29. Will you admit to yourself that these are Jesus' sayings and these are the things he said to do? Or will you lie to yourself and pretend that they're just a good idea, a moral compass, a high idea or modem? I have a book called My Utmost for His Highest, written by Oswald Chambers. Bluntly, he said, the Sermon on the Mount is literal and to be taken actual. I have A.W. Tozer. A.W. Tozer said, the Sermon on the Mount is the declaration of those who are in the Kingdom of God. It is not figurative, it is literal. I have many people who tell me you can't live, be, or act upon the Sermon on the Mount. It has to be adapted in order to be adopted. It has to be spiritualized or at least expositionally taught in some way so that we could filter it down so that the average person could accept it. Let me tell you what the average person had to say about these sayings of mine that Jesus said. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. 
If the authority of the Son of God, the Son of Man, has declared that these sayings of mine we are to do, then how do you get around that? For your sake and for God's sake, I don't know what you will do. But I pray that God, by His Holy Spirit and by some miraculous working of His perfect will and His grace upon your life, because of the atonement, because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for you, by washing away all your sins, would cause you to grab a hold of this and understand this is Jesus speaking to you, to me. This is literally what we are to do. And if you do anything less, remember this very carefully. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. There's only one other warning that I could ever say that would be terrifying to me to ever hear what Jesus would say. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of the Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have not cast out devils, and in thy name done ma many marvelous works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Take time today and pray. Ask Jesus if he would have you to participate in this emotional of what Jesus said. Because you see, to whom much is given, much is required, and you could pretend that you did not know what Jesus said and then contend with God about what you did or didn't do. But you know, I almost would rather you don't watch these videos daily of a devotional that is going to confront you right where you're at in your relationship with God and have you deny the fact that God is speaking to you and then stand before him and say, I never knew, then to, in some way, go part way and not finish the work which God has begun in you to finish his salvation and accomplish his will in your life. If Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, and I do believe in eternal salvation, in that what God has foreknown, he also has predestinated, that we all should appear before the throne of God, and that those whom he declares Jesus as his, are saved, then when the Lord says, Lord, Lord, and we say, Lord, Lord, and he says, I depart from me, I have no idea how you would justify eternal salvation in the moment that God declares that he never knew you. But if you choose to walk with God in a humble, serious way, as his disciples were shocked at the authority with which he spoke, and the people were amazed at his doctrine, then I would say to you, Jesus said, will change your life forever. And it will definitely destroy your image of Christianity and make you into a disciple of Jesus himself. And your world, your life, your family, your friends, and everything about you will never again be the same. Because Jesus said,